And you as a human being get to stand there and you know, so you could what you did that in front of your kids. I gotta forgive you because I can only hope that your kids do the same for you. I forgive you, and I hope God does the same. You understand you're charged with the offense of murder. That's a first degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from five to nine, nine years up to life in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a court is calling 2022 CR 8635 state of Texas versus Bond Dale Skirbin. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Brittany Mitchell for the state. For the defense? Jay Norton for Mr. Skirbin. Are you Mr. Skirbin? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? Yes, ma'am. Hope will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Thank you. I'm going to show you what's entitled True Bill of Indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? I do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Your Honor, we are proceeding on count one, paragraph A. Any objection? No, ma'am. <clears throat> Showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. You understand you're charged with the offense of murder. That's a first degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from five to nine, nine years up to life in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. You want to go around? Oh, and for any reason the court doesn't follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Mm -hmm. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? He has, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? He does, in my opinion. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Skirvin, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, oh, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, oh, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, the state is proceeding on count one, paragraph A. Uh, punishment is to be assessed at 35 years in the prison. There's an affirmative finding of a deadly weapon and there are no applications. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes, ma'am. State? Yes. Showing you the paragraph entitled waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counselor, have there been any such motions? No, ma'am. Then to count one, paragraph A, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence? Your Honor, we have to state the exhibit number one in all attachments. Any objections? No, Your Honor, we, Mr. Skirvin and I have gone over those documents together. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state will call and the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses, statements, and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one in attachments and review the same. One man's charges have been upgraded from aggravated assault to murder. According to a police report, 27-year-old Vaughn Skirvin is facing a murder charge after police say he shot and killed 33-year-old Joshua Haran on Friday. Sarah Costa has more information about this story. She's live in our studio. Good morning. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. We got that police report, and it's new this morning. The incident happened last Thursday when Converse Police Department received a call for a shooting in progress, and someone had been shot multiple times. Now, that police report says as while police were en route to the scene, they were informed the shooter called 911, telling them he had just shot someone at that same location in Converse. The affidavit also says he told dispatch he had used the gun. 
The gun he had used was in his possession. He was driving to its house in Universal City. The suspect told dispatch his address, and that's when Universal City police arrived at his house where he surrendered peacefully. Now, that affidavit says police found the AK-47, which matched the description of the weapon that was used in the shooting. Also, they found more belongings in his front seat of his, of his car. Now, investigators found more bullets and a pistol magazine in his car as well. He is facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon to murder after that victim died died from his injuries at the hospital on Friday. At review in states exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, ma'am. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Judge, uh, Mr. Skirvin is remorseful. He's never been in trouble before and he understands it's a significant sentence and he just asked the court to follow the plea agreement. All right, the court will follow the agreement, sentence you to 35 years in prison. There's an affirmative finding of deadly weapon. The court will give you credit for any time served. To join you with entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? All right. Is there any victim impact? Yes, Your Honor. Um, All right. We have, obviously, there's a lot of family and friends here. There are three that would really wish to address the comment. All right. So we're going to go off the record. Um, Mr. Skirvin, uh, in this courtroom, I require that everyone treats everyone with respect. So uh, family members of the complainant has something they want to say with you, say to you. So just internalize it. They are going to be respectful. All right. Who wishes to speak? Okay. All right. If he wishes to, he can, he can stay there. That will make it easier for the deputies. Okay. I'm the father of brother. To me, you're a coward. 35 years ain't no time. You know what I'm saying? I respect this courtroom, so I don't feel like you be more so. I feel like, you know, what you're doing is fucked up. See my language. All right, there's so everyone, here's the thing. I, I no, no, here's the thing, everyone. I understand that tempers are high, and they're always high in these cases in felony court but I understand that they're even higher when it involves a murder case. And I understand uh, that um, someone has lost a loved one. I do understand, but we are not gonna use profanity in this court. Uh, if we do, what will end up happening is there will not be a victim impact statement. So when people start using um, profanity in court start swaying back and forth the way you're swaying back and forth that puts deputies on high alert and that makes the court not safe the way it should be all right so this is what i would like you to do for me have a seat and speak from a seated position that will make it easier for everyone and if you want to you can sit on this side so that he'll be able to see you because i know there's equipment in the way and that just makes it easier for everyone all right, you may proceed. You know, you take my brother life. He got kids. You ain't thinking about none of that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all would never know how it feels to lose a loved one because you're a coward. I'm from the streets. I know what it is. So, but I never respect this because you did it in a cowardly way. You know what I'm saying? You take my brother life for what? For nothing. For nothing. Because you was a coward, because you couldn't face that. My brother was a good man, good father, worked real hard, took care of his kids. I just came home from doing 11 years, and I didn't even get to see my brother. You know what I'm saying? So, if you feel like that 35 is just for, none of us feel that way. But that ain't for me to judge, it's God. So, with that said, I hope when you sit in there, you really realize the life that you're taking. It ain't, it ain't gonna never just be what it is. We can't get that back. His kids can't see him. His kids can't, he can't see his kids graduate. 
what my mother go through every day, my dad, the rest of my family, those that can't be here to speak. Words can't even too much express explain how we really feel. But you, you gonna always be a coward in my eyes. Always. And I'm gonna let that, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Because I'm gonna let my words be few. All right, thank you. Uh, who's the next person? So I'm just going to speak on behalf of the chance. Um, you took my father, for my daughter. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm not there to say this in person, but I know the sentence you were given to spend put away is nothing compared to the literal death sentence you gave my dad. You're a complete coward, and I hope you live the rest of your life in shame and guilt. I walk the stage to graduate in three weeks, and I won't have my dad in the stands watching me because of you. You're a monster, and I promise to make sure everyone, including those you love, will see it. You get the freedom of getting visits from your kids, while me and my siblings get the pain of visiting a cemetery. When you do get those visits from your kids, I hope all they see is a criminal, a monster, and a disgusting human. One day, these same words will come to you again, but from my mouth, and I'll look at you in your face. As your life goes downhill, the way you looked at my dad and took his life. I promise you won't live to see a normal life again as long as I'm around. I'll make sure your face is engraved in people's heads so when they see you, they will see a murderer. My dad taught me and my siblings to be strong physically and mentally, so I assure you that I will get justice for my dad one way or another. This isn't the end, so remember, please, with these words, with every day that passes. Okay. Is there anyone else? Final one. Your Honor, I'd ask if I could use the mic. You have nothing to worry about me. Okay. Christian, oh, no, I understand. Microphone or amplifier. Um, you, you referenced the book twice, reading books twice. I'm reading a book right now, and as it ended with the impact of words. And if this is victim impact, I want to be very, I want to use clarity. Oh, well, I can tell you that I can, I'm the furthest person away from everybody, and I can hear you. All right. But thank you for that. I appreciate that. I didn't write anything down. <clears throat> on Dale's curving. I'm trying to speak on behalf of Mark, Brenda, April, Crystal, Matthew, Elijah, Daniel, Sabrina, Brianna. These these are most of the siblings. I'm sure I forgot some Also, on behalf of Dominique, Zania, and Joshua Jr., these are his kids. That's a direct impact. I'm just a brother in law. When I have to hear his mother, Antonia, say, hey, you get to still see your family. Coming up on Mother's Day. My fear was that we were going to ask for time for that. I thought that would have been very insuitable. Because none of who I just mentioned will ever get to see him again. And you didn't take a thug or a gangster away. You took a good man. Would to be a Christian man? My wife said, April, she said, make sure he knows that on behalf of her and everybody that agrees with her, that they forgive you. Because well, it's just in the Bible, I know I do too. I have to. I implore you to read the book of Jack Job. The book of Job is a complicated, complicated book. It's one of the hardest to read because it's a man that followed God. With everything that's going to wear now, but it's so hard. Look at you because can't think of, can't help but think. On November 21st, when I'm talking to the doctor outside of 309, the room he died in. And I asked him, How many times, how many, how many gunshots did he receive? And the doctor said, We can't even tell. And you, as a human being, get to stand there and I can you an honest as you could. Do you, do you receive what that, what you did that in front of your kids? I got to forgive you because I can only hope that your kids do the same for you. 
I thought it was going to be cool when I came up here and I came. Hey, I forgive you. I forgive you and I hope God does the same. But just know I named those names and that's just the beginning of it because you took the life, the party. You took a human being that was anything but nothing before being the best father that I know. And I'm a great father. And you did that in front of your own kids. I don't know what was going through your head when that happened. That's for you and God. I actually came up here on behalf of my wife. I didn't know I was gonna say so much, but I wanted you to know on her behalf, forgive me. Okay, I forget you.